says the gun is in there. She was carrying a Mac 11 semi-automatic. Chino shot her like three to four times. At that moment, I just felt like it was over. She says she doesn't want to do it. He says it's too late. Her life was lived in real fear. Look at her. She is radiant. This is not about vengeance. This is about law. When Nestor Chino de Jesus and Paula Gutierrez woke up on the morning of July 6, 2001, they only had a few dollars to their names. What they would do next would set off a series of tragic events that would lead to the violent deaths of two people and make a jury decide if Paula was a willing accomplice or forced by an abusive boyfriend to make the biggest mistake of her life. Chino woke me up in the morning and told me to get dressed, wear something baggy. I did that, walked into the day room, and he says, come on. Only when we got in the car, he told me that we were gonna rob the bank. He pointed to the back of the um car, and there was a bag, and he said, the gun is in there. He grabbed a, um, a hat and a bandana, he says, put this on. They just were hard up. They didn't have jobs, and they were getting close to uh, their car being repossessed. He says, you're gonna um, hold the gun while I go in there and get the money. My thought was, if I don't get in there, it's gonna be me. You know, my, I'm, I'm gonna, he's gonna hurt me, I'm gonna die. So I grabbed it, put the hat on, and jumped, jumped out, and held the gun, and told everybody to um, keep their heads down. Yes, there's a bank robbery in progress. Can you calm down? Tell me what you say. Uh, well, two men ran in the store with masks and a blue bag. I do remember people being scared, looking up, and I remember I was firm. And I know that looked bad on me, but it was more of a protection, like keep your heads down. And from there, he grabbed the money. We ran out of the bank got into the car. 911, what is your emergency? This is 1501 South Church Avenue. We just got robbed. This is Bank of America. Okay. Are there any injuries? No, but he had a gun. Okay. Did he get any money? He, he took everything. Did he get the guy back? He got the guy back. Okay, I'm sending you the police right now. Do not open those doors. As we're driving away, the die pack's going off. So he opens up the window. Money's going everywhere. Somebody robbed the bank and came by the house and threw the money out in the road. Did you pick it up? We're picking it up right now. The police helicopter probably was in up in the air within 15 or 20 minutes or so. They were looking for a yellow SUV, in particular a yellow S Xterra. They were kind of on a wild goose chase after other yellow SUVs, the other yellow Xterras that were not Paula and Nestor. After we got home, I got in and jumped straight in the shower. He yelled a few minutes later and basically, get out the shower and get dressed. He wanted to leave the apartment because, you know, they were looking for him. So I come out, grab some shorts, the t-shirt, and get dressed. When we left, we had the bag with the gun. We we're closing the door, and that's when Officer Marrero stepped up. Chino took off. Officer Marrero ran after him. She is on the radio calling out to her fellow police officers that she's got eyes on him and she's closing in on him. And at some point, the two of them meet. He's got a gun, she's got a gun. And she's telling him, drop the gun, drop the gun. I didn't say a word. I don't know. Maybe she might have hesitated. I think maybe she thought she could maybe talk this guy, kid out. Her being Hispanic, him being Hispanic. Nestor reaches down towards his left hip, pulls out a weapon, and starts firing. 
Chino shot her like three to four times. And she was in shock, you know, because she looked at me, you know, in my eyes. And she started walking towards me. And we just saw her right in front of me. That's the opposite shot. Yeah, she's not even moving. Oh, my God. You know, little things stick in your mind real well. Most police officers wear a, 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 a boot, and in in it's called high-tech. And that was the first thing I noticed was the bottom of the boot was the red emblem that said high-tech. It was like time stopped. What snapped me out of it was Chino screaming, get the gun. Now look, and he's just, he's got his gun up, and he's looking right at me like he had been waiting for me. And he just, boom, 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 and he starts shooting at me. And so I start returning fire against him. You heard officer down, officer down. And uh, that brought in the cavalry. I think every single police officer in Tampa, it felt like every single police officer in Tampa was armed and ready to go. I run down south on the sidewalk and to the last breezeway because I'm out. Basically, I'm going to cut the son of a off and kill him. Coming up, a bank heist gone bad gets worse after Chino takes a hostage. And all of a sudden, I heard the kicks at the door. I got up at the second kick and noticed that the whole wall was shaking. And that's when the door flew in. Or Not only have Chino de Jesus and Paul Gutierrez robbed a bank, but Chino has now shot and killed Tampa police officer Lois Marrero. The couple then runs up this stairway into a hallway with police in hot pursuit. During that time, I don't remember, but I know that there was a deposition of a police officer basically saying that um, Chino used me as a human shield. And when I started screaming, the police officer stopped basically shooting. Chino turned around, kicked down the door, and threw me inside. So as I'm getting up, he tells me, go see if there's anybody in the apartment. She said he's in here. And he came in and said, come here. He goes, come here, I need you for a second. I um, was like, please don't kill me. Please don't hurt me. They've now taken a hostage, and they realize, at least Chino does, that he has very few options at this point. He's surrounded by police. There's a hostage negotiator trying to reach him, and they want both Paula and Chino to give themselves up. When I first arrived at the scene, an officer in the middle of the street in front of the apartment, he uh, walked towards me and handed me a phone. And I said, who's that? And he said, uh, uh, the suspect on the phone. You know, you hear me? Go out from here, all right? Uh, just stay here with you, and I'll just kind of walk, walk, walk me through this, all right? Uh, we were able to uh, introduce the phone, and the phone had, has a camera and a listening device. Let's take it one step at a time, okay? We don't want anybody else getting hurt. But I think come out, and then we'll deal with the next person, or, okay? Once we introduced the uh, phone to the apartment, we realized that... Uh, Chino was uh, looking at the front door with a gun in his hand, and if we enter that apartment, uh, whoever entered the apartment may get shot. It's, it's, it's just, you know, shocking that this young man is holding a gun to his chin. And what you see is Chino contemplating suicide. What happened? Chino's demeanor oh, went up and down. Okay. He, uh, he was calm one minute, and he, uh, you know, got upset. You're going to be okay, man. We're going to go. We're going to get through this. We're going to resolve this. You know, your mother is out here waiting for you. Ask her to come here. Okay. Let's get this over. He said, man, I really f***ed up. And he goes, I can't believe I shot a cop. And he was like, a cop. At that point, Chino says, but the officer, the officer's dead. The officer's dead. I heard it on the news. The officer was dead. Chino was very erratic, telling me basically that we needed to kill ourselves and that if I didn't want the, um, the charges, then I had to do the same thing. The twist before all this happens is that there's a kiss between Paula and Chino. It's like these lovers, you know, sharing this one last intimate moment. We both have the guns to our, um, our chins, and um, 
When he counts two on the first one, I just start, you know, screaming. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Because I keep seeing my daughter's face. And he, see, he says, forget everything and just put the gun to your arm, to your chin, and just pull it. And all of a sudden, uh, he says, I'm going to, that's it. I'm not going to, he stopped talking. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to do this. You don't want to talk to the phone, man. Come on. Well, hey. One shot. When Chino shot himself at two, it, 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 it just shocked me, and, it, and I just snapped out of it. Once he kills himself, you see him slump over, and Paula reach out to him and stroke him. I walked out with my hands up and turned myself in. There was some relief there, I, I gotta be honest. I think hypothetically, if Nestor hadn't killed himself, they would have had the shooter. They would have had the object of, of, you know, of their natural desire for vengeance. And I think Paula uh, probably would have been charged with robbery and not felony murder. Coming up. Look at her, she is radiant in this picture. Facing life in prison, Paula Gutierrez goes on trial for being an accomplice to murder. A minister gunned down. Now, a New Hampshire man stands trial for murder. Prosecutors say they have fingerprint evidence found on a Glock handgun near the crime scene that links Castiglione to Garcia's death. The defendant was allegedly found praying over the victim's body. Court TV cameras are taking you inside the courtroom for every dramatic moment. The Murdered Minister Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings at 8, 7 central on Court TV. The funeral for Officer Marrero was held here at the Sacred Heart Church in downtown Tampa, just two blocks from police headquarters. More than 800 officers, family members and friends mourned inside, while outside, officers six deep lined both sides of the street to pay their final respects to Tampa's first female officer killed in the line of duty. She was one of the most decorated Hispanic police officers at the Tampa Police Department. She gave 110% everything she did. She's solid to the end from the very get-go. She was, she was just, uh, she was a real good troop. I mean, you know, she was a, a one-of-a-kind. Uh, she was just a, she was a go-getter. The fact that Chino de Jesus had taken his own life left some officers feeling they'd been cheated of justice. I would have rather been the one that could have done it for him, uh, but that's not the way that chips fell. I don't know. You know, you know, he left us for no revenge, no way to get back at him. Someone who kills a police officer is going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Paula is charged with first-degree felony murder and robbery and kidnapping. And all those charges add up to a life sentence without parole. Well, in felony murder, generally, you're not the killer. That's just how it works, because felony murder um, holds responsible anyone who participated in the felony on which it's based. For her client to have any chance of ever seeing freedom, defense attorney Deanne Athan must convince a jury that Paula only participated in the robbery because she feared for her life. I believe she was under duress when she committed the robbery. I believe that, that she was so fearful of Chino that she would have done anything he asked her to do short, short of killing herself, which she almost did too. But as the trial got underway, it was an argument the prosecution had clearly anticipated. Look at her. She is radiant in this picture. This is a pose that you would see if it was an actress holding her first Oscar or a graduate from college holding their well-earned diploma. The bank robbery was probably the most compelling evidence that Paula was an active participant in the crime and not a, a person being controlled by Chino because 
she took a very active role in the robbery. Is that the look of a woman who was forced in a look of fear to you? The robbery in and of itself is a very calculated offense. And, and uh, when, you, when they left their apartment, uh, I think it was very clear she knew where they were going and what they were going to do. What's the first thing unusual you heard? Everybody get down on the floor. What'd you see? A man running at me. Someone running at me with a gun. Then a female voice said, um, get down, do not look up, stay down. She stood at a position in the lobby with that semi-automatic firearm raised and repeated Nestor de Jesus' commands to the customers and the, the employees to get down, stay down. Having that bank surveillance video and seeing Paula dressed the way she was, armed, and ordering people around, it really negated her argument that she was being controlled by Chino. But one of the most powerful hurdles that Paula would have to overcome was officer testimony about the death of Officer Marrero. I got out of my car. I went around the, the parked vehicle, and when I got around the vehicle, I, I saw somebody laying in the uh, parking lot. I went up, and it was Lois. What did you do? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I went to her, uh, checked her condition. Uh, she wasn't breathing. And Nestor de Jesus fired two shots that entered the body of Lois Marrero, causing her to bleed to death. When Officer Marrero came to the back of that car, had Paula Gutierrez thrown her hands up and said, you've got me. I'm now in the safety of a Tampa police officer who has a gun on me. Her involvement, at least, in this felony murder would have concluded. Uh, but what did she do? She continued uh, her flight. Paula was there when uh, Chino eventually shot Lois. And uh, at that point, Paula picked out the gun from Lois and went inside the apartment with Chino and barricaded herself. So she was as much part of this as Tina was. What, what is it going to take to resolve this? We don't want anybody else to get hurt. Oh, you're not going to jail. You weren't involved in this robbery, OK? I will go to jail. Why? Why do you say that? Well, you people haven't looked at the bank case. I was in there. What's she telling Detective Batista here? I'm going to jail. Haven't you seen the surveillance tapes? Does that show you a level of sophistication and awareness of what was going on in the bank? Sure it did. You see her basically moving about the apartment, doing what Chino says, but I, that was one thing that stuck with me was, why isn't she talking to him and trying to tell him to stop? Let's give ourselves up. We have a daughter. It's over. She didn't say any of that. When we come back, was Paula really an active participant or was she an unwilling accomplice who feared for her own life if she refused to do what she was told? As time passed, the violence escalated. He would hit and kick and punch her. He left her holding the bag. Paula Gutierrez will spend the rest of her life in prison unless her defense attorney can convince the jury that Paula only participated in the bank robbery, which ended with the death of Officer Marrero, because she feared for her own life if she refused. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen closely to the words of Paula Gutierrez. She is not guilty of robbery because she was compelled to act out of duress. Deanne Athan was a force to be reckoned with. She was a passionate advocate for her client and for victims' rights. And if she is not guilty of robbery, she cannot be guilty of felony murder, on which the felony murder is based. You can't do this kind of work, I think, or, or I can't do this kind of work, and not come to care for the person whose life you're fighting for. Paula Gutierrez felt trapped. As time passed, the violence escalated. He would hit and kick and punch her. He would just 
snap. Make no mistake, on July 6, 2001, he gunned down Officer Lois Marrero in cold blood. For the previous three years, he had mentally, physically, and sexually abused Paula Gutierrez. She argued very passionately that Paula Gutierrez was as much a victim as Lois Marrero was of Chino, and that both of them suffered at his hands. This reign of terror culminated on July 6, 2001, when he killed Officer Lois Marrero in front of her eyes. Later, when he put a bullet in his head, ending his life of violence, he committed the ultimate act of abuse against Paula Gutierrez. He left her holding the bag. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that Paula Gutierrez is not guilty. She needed to humanize Paula and to explain her behavior. We needed to hear from Paula. We needed her to explain why she's in the bank, holding a gun, telling people to look down, hiding her identity, fleeing with Chino, and being in that apartment with Chino. I was never afraid of putting Paula on the stand um, because Paula just tells the truth. She just, she just, she just tells the truth. You expected a Bonnie version of a Bonnie and Clyde. But what I saw instead was a young woman who, was, who seemed shy and quiet and very inconspicuous. And she looked more like a student ready for the first day of class in a new semester than she did as an accomplice to a murder. And what was your first impression of Nestor de Jesus? He looked like a real nice guy. This is the first time during the trial that you really hear Paula's story. He hit me so hard, my hat flew off. Okay, that was pretty hard. And Paula's story is just as shocking as the story about Lois Marrero's death. The first time I met Chino, I worked at um, Greenwich Village in a chiropractor's office, and he approached me, and we started talking. I was 16, 17 years old. He looked like a college student to me. He didn't look like a, you know, a thug or anything like that. He looked like a good, you know, guy. Chino and Paula had a very complicated relationship. My parents try to, you know, um, have her not see him. My father really didn't like him. My mother was trying to give him a chance, but I don't think she liked him either. Okay. My father just had a feeling like something wasn't right and they don't, you know, they didn't approve of the relationship. Paula took the jury through her upbringing, how she met Chino, how young they were. And it was a toxic relationship. He had a very bad temper and he probably had an untreated mental illness because he was so violent. He was just mad at, you know, he's like, I'm gonna kill you if you don't wanna be with me. You know, and he just kept repeating that that he wanted to be with me, that, you know, that he was going to kill me if I had somebody else, that if I was going to be with him. It all started because she loved Chino. And love is not something that any of us can control. Love is an emotion that comes from part of the brain that is not rational. Looking back, I just saw a good side to him. From time to time, he could be very, you know, very loving to Paula. That, that is part of the cycle of domestic violence. Uh, they, you know, they beat you up and then they say they're sorry. It was in cycles of the threats, um, the physical um, violence, the rapes, locking himself in there with my daughter, threatening my family. It escalated over the years. And why I held on for so long, I think it, it, the, at that time it was just the fear. I, I just couldn't leave. She described episodes of extreme violence when he was choking her and she was so emotional and it really felt very genuine. It didn't feel like she was making up these stories. He started telling me, oh, you don't want to be with me anymore? And I'm like, you Did know, his demeanor change? Yeah, now he was really angry. Okay. And I saw him like, I just need a break. He's like, who are you seeing? You know, he started accusing me again of seeing somebody else. Did you tell him I don't want to see you? Yes. And what did he say? He wanted to hear it. He was just, he goes and he slams me against the, the wall and he starts choking me. Once she was pregnant with Ashley, 
he was not going to let her go. He was not going to let her go. I miss my cycle. Got a pregnancy test. Found out I was pregnant. I do believe that it was a plan because that was his response. I got you now. I, he said, I already knew. How did you feel about the fact that now you're having this man's baby? I felt, I felt trapped. By the age of 24, when all this happened, I, I was just a shell of a person, you know, um, fearing him. Even though my dad offered help, I just felt like you're going to get in the way, you know, and he's going to hurt you. For me, I just felt like that was it, like just the nail on the coffin. You said, if anything happens to me, tell mommy to take care of Ashley. Yes. OK. Why, why did you say that? Felt like my time was running short. So okay. What do you mean by that? I could be dead any day. So I wanted my, you know, my mother to know to take care of my daughter. De Jesus barricades the door with a chair. For the next several hours, Detective Bert Batista, a hostage negotiator, tries to talk De Jesus out. De Jesus tells him they're going to commit suicide. The evidence in that trial included uh, a videotape of a suicide. And watching that in the courtroom, along with everybody else, you could hear a pin drop. Well, I'll put a bullet in my head. Don't do that, man. I'm going to do it. Ash, what about Ashley? You know, she's out. I'm going to do it. Why? Why are you going to do that? I can't go to jail. Man, come on. I'm going to do it. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Chino. Chino, put up the phone, man. Come on. Well, there you go. One shot. One shot. It was very disturbing, and it was so disturbing that one of the jurors had to be excused after that evidence was viewed. I thought maybe the jury would also find it troubling and, and think, OK, well, you know, she had to live through this. I can understand why, you know, why she might have feared him, might have done what she did out of fear. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you will give in this cause to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Please be seated. Next, the defense calls on an unlikely witness. There was one officer, I remember his testimony being very compelling. One of the things that the defense wanted to question him about was the moment when Chino used Paula as a human shield. I've got my gun pointed at him, and as I'm running up to get another shot on him, I, I notice there's a female right up here by this, what ultimately is a door. Did you have any idea who she was? No. OK. So now they're, they're close, so what happens next? He grabs the female around the throat. Did you point your gun at him? Yeah, I had my gun at him. OK. What did he do? He grabbed the female around the throat. How? He grabbed her like this. And he held her between him and myself. Were you shooting at him? No, I Was anyone didn't shooting? Want, I didn't want to take a shot at him then. That testimony could be used to help Paula. And he knew that that testimony could potentially do that. Then the white male with the female, he starts kicking the door while he's holding her. And he kicks the door in. Or it looks like he kicks the door in, I should say. And then they go inside an apartment. OK, did, did they go inside the apartment kind of simultaneously? Yeah, they went in together. OK. Her life was lived in real and imminent and impending fear, never knowing when he was going to snap. Ladies and gentlemen, the events of July 6th are tragic. Nestor de Jesus, the only responsible person, has paid for it with his life. This is not about vengeance. This is about law. Coming up, a potentially fatal weakness in the prosecution's case. And in no uncertain terms, if the robbery is done at the time Lois Marrero is shot, Paula Gutierrez is not guilty of felony murder. I started hearing these stories about murder and stuff. I'm about to be the biggest drug dealer that you can become. <laughs> oh my God, are they starting a war with me or what? I'm not gonna lie, it felt good to be a gangster. She just points the gun out of my face. Boom, 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 boom. Just shoots me. We knew that what we were doing had consequences. 
but we just didn't care. Vice on Court TV. Weeknights at 7, 6 central. Only on Court TV. Roll now. Under Florida's law of felony murder, Paulo Gutierrez faces life in prison for a murder that prosecutors say happened during the commission of a felony, the armed robbery of a Bank of America. But if the defense can convince the jury that the robbery was over by the time Officer Marrero was killed, then Paula could one day walk free. It is possible for, for the jury to find that the robbery had terminated upon entry into her apartment. Remember that Lois Marrero was not killed until they exited the apartment. If a jury determines that the robbery concluded when they were in their apartment, then the murder of Lois Marrero is the independent act of Nestor de Jesus. And as a matter of law, uh, they could find that if that did in fact happen, then she's not guilty of felony murder. Hey, look at this courtroom. We have police officers, and you know what? One of their own is dead. One of their own is dead, but she didn't have anything to do with it. She didn't have anything to do with it. That was a new series of events. That was Nestor de Jesus. It was as unexpected to her as to anybody. Her Deanne believed that the robbery was over the moment they reached the safety of their apartment. I don't believe it's felony murder because I believe that the escape had ended. The, the escape, they had made their escape good. And so they had reached their temporary place of safety momentarily. Her escape was done. It's not felony murder. Deanne Ethan argued so passionately and so convincingly that the two crimes were separate, that one crime was over by the time Lois was killed. She didn't help anybody kill anyone. She didn't participate. And she is just as affected as anyone else who, who witnessed that horrifying event. She shouldn't be the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> because Nestor de Jesus took his own life and has robbed us all of the vengeance of getting a cop killer in this courtroom. She is not a cop killer. Both arguments, I felt, were both very compelling, with one side arguing for justice for Rose Marrero, and the other one arguing for the life of a young woman who made a really bad choice that day. I had not been able to sleep for the last couple of nights just thinking of the potential non-guilty verdict, not because Paula would not spend the rest of her life in jail, but because that would be so uh, dishonorable to Lois. She deserved to have the person who helped her murder take place be incarcerated for the rest of her life. I understand, you know, family and friends of Officer Marrero. They lost a loved one, that's, I understand that. But you know, that doesn't mean you have to turn around and, you know, try to blame somebody. You understand, especially my sister that did not kill her. It would take the jury a little over seven hours to decide Paula's fate. Ms. Gordon, has the jury reached a verdict? Yes. Would you hand it to the bailiff, please, ma'am? And Madam Clerk, would you publish the verdict, please? State of Florida versus Paula Andrea Gutierrez, case number 0110371. With the jury, find as follows as to count one of the indictment in this case. The defendant is guilty of felony murder, first degree, as charged. After the verdict was read, that was um, very traumatic. Um, it was, sorry. And when they said guilty, it was like somebody stabbed me. And I just froze and my mom didn't understand what was going on. She just said, what did they say? And I said, guilty. And she screamed. We the jury find as follows as to count two of the indictment in this case. The defendant is guilty of robbery with a firearm, actually possessing firearm, as charged. We the jury find as follows as to count three of the indictment in this case. 
The defendant is guilty of armed burglary of a dwelling, actually possessing firearm, as charged. I'm, I'm very disappointed, um, but I never criticize what a jury does. I respect what they do. I, it's, you know, this is how our system works, and, and I always accept what the jury, what the jury decides. Given that this kind of defense is rarely successful, um, the fact that the jury really did think about the facts of the case and didn't just have a knee-jerk reaction and find her guilty, I think, um, you know, shows that we met some of those challenges. You 12 people have answered for us the otherwise unanswerable questions. Thank you very much, and you're discharged. I will say that my shoulders feel a little bit lighter today. This will be part of the healing process. I still have a way to go. So yes, I will say that I've started that healing process today. Do I feel bad for her as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter? Sure, I'm, I'm sorry that those things happened to her, but they happened to her for reasons. She could have made changes in her life to have a direct effect and a direct impact um, on the rest of her life, and she chose not to do it. On June 23rd, 2003, Paula went before a judge for sentencing. Your Honor, I come to you in Jesus' name to plead mercy upon the court, to state my regrets of the lives lost and pain inflicted. Officer Marrero died a tragic death by the hands of Chino. I feel pain that she's gone and I hurt that I can't go back in time and change things somehow. Officer Marrero's death was a tragedy, but my sister, she does not deserve to be there. Does she make mistakes? Yes, I, I totally understand that. I know that she did, but she didn't kill anybody. I just didn't take part in Officer Marrero's murder in any way. I'm not a cold-hearted murderer as portrayed. I am paying you for Nessa's actions. Ms. Gutierrez, it's the uh, judgment order and the sentence of the court that you be uh, confined in the Florida State Prison for the remainder of your natural life on each of these three offenses. When Judge Padgett sentenced me to life, I, I was in shock. I heard life and, and I just kind of blocked out because I heard my mother screaming. It didn't matter that, you know, I got beat. It didn't matter that I got raped. But at the same time, I, I'm alive. I made it through that. And so because of my daughter, Ashley, she's the one, she's the reason, she's my reason for being alive. That was the face that I kept seeing. So I wanted her to know how important she is to me. Coming up, Paula's daughter, Ashley, speaks. It's just hard when you grow up and everyone tells you, don't worry, your mother's going to get out. Your mother's going to get out. And I'm just still waiting. I'm tired of waiting. My name is Ashley Gutierrez. I'm the biological daughter of Paula Gutierrez and Nestor De Jesus. Hola, mi amor. <laughs> Raising Ashley was, um, the dynamic was my parents were the parents. Um, and then me and my sister, we were her, her sisters. But then at the same time, we, we had the relationship before that we were aunts. Um, I do see my grandparents as my actual parents and being adopted by them, my aunts and my sisters as well. At times, it, it could have been a little bit confusing for her, but, you know, at the end, it was, you know, us trying to, our best to, to raise her and, you know, give her the love and the support for not having her family, her, her real parents. So when I first found out exactly what had happened, I was about eight years old. I went to Google. Um, I typed in their names and just a bunch of articles news articles, news stories, photos, even my baby photos on there. So it was pretty much a shocker. It seemed like something that would happen only in movies. Sort of was unbelievable that that was my parents. But I mean, it made me understand what was going on more. And um, she decided to tell me herself the full story when I turned 14 and I went to visit her. I spoke to my parents. I'm like, well, what do you think is a good age? 
they were like, maybe about 14, you couldn't explain to her everything that happened. Because I, I knew she had questions. We sat her down at VP. I went outside with her on the grass. And I just told her everything. I th didn't lie to her about anything. I just told her the whole story. It was, it was very emotional, because seeing her perspective rather than what's, what was written about her, she gave everything, all the details, from the beginning of their relationship to basically the end. I thought it was important that she heard it from my, my mouth and for her to know my heart. We're super close. I tell her basically everything. She tells me everything about what's going on with her. Um, we give each other advice, basically like any mother-daughter relationship, really. I am angry a little bit, you know, because if it wasn't for him and his decisions and him pushing my sister to do the things that she did, she wouldn't be in prison. I do understand his anger and the way he grew up, how that affected his actions as an adult, but I, I also don't excuse him for that. My mother didn't deserve all the abuse she endured, no matter how he grew up. No one deserves that. Paula Gutierrez's story has always stuck with me because it's a cautionary tale that the choices you make, as short-sighted as they were, could end in very long-term consequences. And while the killer ended his own life, she's paying for his mistake. She's paying for the murder of Lois Marrero. Her punishment should reflect in a way that justifies the crime. And if you haven't pulled the trigger, and if there were mitigating circumstances, there should be some hope for her. We are trying to address domestic violence, which is very pervasive. Uh, but we're failing because still women are being abused, still women are being killed. And women like Paul are being used by men like Nestor the Jesus uh, for his ends. We have not run out of hope. Um, I, I believe, I strongly believe that my sister is going to one day walk out free. It's just hard when you grow up and everyone tells you to worry. Your mother's gonna get out. Your mother's gonna get out, and I'm just I'm still waiting. I'm tired of waiting. Paula Gutierrez has been in prison for the past two decades here at the Florida Women's Reception Center in Ocala, Florida. She has exhausted all of her appeals, and with three life sentences, she's not eligible for parole. Officer Lois M. Marrero was the Tampa Police Department's first female officer killed in the line of duty. On October 11, 2016, a memorial garden was erected at the Tampa Police District 1 to honor her memory.